All right, so some interesting bit of information here. The starter that was in oh, the Cutlass project. Oh, no, sorry, not the project here. Uh, the starter that was originally in it, I still have it, I couldn't take it back. Apparently is the wrong one, and it was in fact for a 307. This starter is for a 305. So I probably going could have saved this flywheel from eternal damnation if there would have been the correct starter in it. So my theory is that from day one, it had the wrong starter in it. So when I replaced the starter with a new one, I was anticipating that it was for a 305 and that there was just a, a wrong starter in it. Well, it turns out that it made the same grindy noises after shimming it and shimming it and shimming it, and nothing changed. You can see that the starter was not happy. The flywheel teeth are all ground down on the edge. So the transmission is all hooked back up. The flywheel, it, that's in it now is definitely for a 305. This flywheel and the flywheel that I put in it definitely did have some differences. So I'm hoping that um, when I go to crank this thing over, that it is going to be happy and healthy and it's going to make normal 305 starter noises rather than, you know, and missing teeth and grinding teeth and starter premature, starter disengagement and I had a whole bunch of aggravation, so I'm hoping that, you know, that this will fix it, and uh, that'll be the end of it. So I'm just in the midst of um, doing the tranny lines. I have them in there, I just have to tighten them down. I had to loosen off the fan shroud to get to the lower uh, tranny line. Engine is in there, solid, everything. Oh, well, I never touched the engine mounts anyway. But uh, the only thing left for me to do is to Let's shed some light on the subject here. I didn't turn on. It's supposed to be really hot today. Um, the only thing I didn't do was there's a bolt in yonder and it's kind of tight to get at. You really need a really thin, thin, thin wrench in order to get in there. You can kind of, you know, hand thread it in there, you know, quarter turn at a time. But my knuckles are all busted up um, from moving last week. So bought a new house and, uh, I hurt myself, I fell off the back of my cube truck. So anyway, kind of taking it slow and easy. So I'll get the starter motor in there today and see what I can do. I lost about, oh, I don't know, three quarters of a pint of transmission fluid. And the transmission kind of got tilted a little bit during the whole process of this. But anyway, I lubricated the dowel pins nice and it slid right in there once I got everything corrected. Drive shaft is in speedometer cable I never disconnected the um, what else was there there was the uh, cross member it was welded in there believe it or not and I had to um, I had to bust loose the welds oh, there's that pint of transmission fluid so yeah I had to uh, I had to do some some uh, grinding action along here you can kind of see I think it's right there. I had to grind some of the welds up. I don't know why for the life of me anybody would weld a transmission cross member in there. Um, normally, all, every G-body ever worked on, there's usually a bolt here, just one on each side, and that's all that there is holding them in there. Um, the project car was the same way, one bolt per side. Yeah, there's two holes in the frame. Yeah, you could cram two bolts in there, but every G-body I ever worked on, there was only one per side, so. Ah, uh, transmission mount is all in there, you know, everything's all good, hunky-dory. I just have to hook up the tranny lines. Uh, well, tighten them down, they're all good at the tranny. I just have to hook them up with the radiator. The drive shaft is in there. And um, once I get that done, I mean, you know, hook up the battery. It sucks. All this time, it was just a faulty starter that was grinding it. And you know what, I thought it was either the wrong starter because I always thought you couldn't cram a 307 starter in a 305 Chevy. So I was always under the impression that this was a 307 starter because I forget the name of this. I just call it a cone or drive housing or whatever. It was always inverted. See, 
we take a look, like, I mean, normally a 307 starter is on the driver's side, so we can tell that's why the cone is there. And this is a 305 starter, and we can see where the cone is. See, it's meant for it to be mounted on the passenger side of the block. Well, the starter that I was told was out of a 307, or was for a 307, it looks exactly the same as this starter. So either the drive gear has different teeth or something along those lines. And uh, I was always under the impression that this was a 307 starter. So I don't know how there was a mix up here, but I'm told that, yeah, in fact, it was the wrong darn starter all this time. So um, this whole scenario probably could have been avoided and that flywheel probably could have been saved. You know, in hindsight, you know, the flywheel, I've seen worse, but, but yeah, like uh, it all depends on the location of the flywheel too. So, I mean, you know, you could put a new starter in there and you know with the old flywheel and it could still miss you know miss a tooth on engagement and just go Meow. so i mean like it's done i'm just i'm not gonna bother with that i'm just gonna toss it pitch it and uh, i'll put the new one in there and hope for the best i mean that's all i can do so um but anyway i'm not sure i didn't cross reference any part number so i don't even know off the top of my head if, you know if uh, you know that starter was for a 307 or not, I never had the chance yet. So um, just gonna take it out of the bag, casting numbers. And of course, the starter I purchased the starter two years ago. Kind of hard to do this single-handedly, but that starter I purchased two years ago. I thought it was last summer, and turns out that no, that is in fact wrong. It was purchased in 2019. Amazing how time flies and passes by, you know, you kind of forget things. But, you know, so that's two full seasons, two full summers, where the starter that was in it, the wrong one, was in that car and it was cranking over the flywheel and all this, and you know, it was gradually wearing everything down. So, anyway, it is what it is. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so that's the new girl right there kind of looks exactly the same as what the old one did to be honest so nothing but starter motors this year i don't know what the hell all right so i brought in the other one this starter is brand new like i mean the sticker is still on here the number however got from the heat i guess wore off the number there's a number here that's the brand new one but this one's totally wore off so i mean in hindsight i don't know like i mean they look somewhat identical i mean the gap here though the gap here almost looked like they're a little longer, but uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell from perspective just by eyeballing it, but it does look like this um, drive housing is a little longer than this one. So it, it does look like the solenoid length is definitely longer on the old one. This, this correct starter is apparently a little shorter, but this one here is a little longer but uh, I don't think the solenoid really matters. The solenoid is a solenoid regardless, so. Um, yeah. So, anyway. I'm told it's the wrong one. Um, so, and we even got shims with it this time, so. This one never came with any. So I'll drop that sucker in there. It's pretty well the last thing on my list to do, except that last tranny bolt. Um, but I mean all the other ones are in there. So I mean I could technically crank the engine over It's not going to cause any adverse harm to the car or the transmission so I can give it a test and See if there's anything any little bit of a better difference here So just kind of Fighting around with you know flare nut wrenches wouldn't work on those so I <laughs> Somebody had them off before too and it looks like they're a little bird, but you know the tranny lines are in good shape too Which is great Actually, the whole body of the car is in good shape, so I'm glad I didn't have to mess around with anything else. It was actually a quick, pretty quick, decent job, all things considered. I mean, the only thing that took the most time is actually grinding off those welds. I was using a, a zip cut to try and get in there to actually grind off towards the side and then an angle grinder to grind up because I couldn't actually get an angle grinder in there with the exhaust the way it was, and I didn't want to dismantle the exhaust because this crossover pipe is leaking 
it's starting to anyway and I was worried that if I started fighting with the exhaust that it's gonna be loud and it's gonna have one hell of a leak so I decided to leave the exhaust well enough alone and I just used zip cuts and just spent a little extra time so I didn't have to fight with it afterwards but anyway I'm gonna get this in here now and hook up the battery uh, double check my fasteners make sure they're good and torqued and inspection cover I put that back on last night so all the flywheel bolts are torqued down and then I'll document everything that I've done service wise <clears throat> service wise uh, so anyway yeah, mileage we got 116,409 on the clock and that's where it ended you know, so that's when the service was done to it Jeez, this thing doesn't want to stand there so I'm gonna do that quickly and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes and if in fact this starter is out of a 307 which my mechanic seems to tell me that it is I usually order my parts from my mechanic because he gets a little better price than I do it's always good to have a mechanic friend uh, if that starter is in fact for a 307 this one here always gave me grief uh, there was a brief time where I'd have to wake the starter up with a blunt object and uh, so this car always did need a new starter from eons ago so I think I'll if it does fit in there and hooks up properly and doesn't grind against the flywheel like it did like that starter did this one then maybe I'll shove it in this car and I'll leave it in there because this one's definitely due it's due for a lot of things to be honest yeah, it continues here at the shop it's never ending Okay, I'm going to try this in real time. The solenoid didn't have a stamp on it, which it usually has the letter S. Indicates that that's where, you know, you're supposed to hook up the ignition key to. It didn't have one, so... And then I realized that the starter motor was remanufactured re in China. Okay, so we'll try it. Nope, I have them hooked up on the wrong side. <laughs> Alright, well, kind of figured that. Mind you, that's a quick, easy job. I just can't believe that the other starter had it. This one doesn't have any markings on it whatsoever. Back under the car I go. All right, so I have it in there. I'll probably have to shim it a few times. There's always that trial and error. There's three of them in there. Give it a shot and see, I guess. That's all we can do. I should really disconnect the distributor, but I'm not going to right now. It won't take off. It's been sitting in here for a while. Oh, that sounds healthy. There we go. That sounds like a healthy 305 to me, except for the <laughs> this getting stuck in there. running at low idle. I guess I'll see if there's any fluid leaks. Hmm. Nothing yet. This is the old puddle. Now let's take an inspection here. I guess we're good. I guess all is good. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Transmission does it anyway.
Well, I guess that concludes it. I mean, it sounds healthy to me. That sounds a lot better. All right. Well, I guess the only thing left to do now is to put the rad uh, shroud back in place. There's still, uh, well, it's still just hanging there. But I mean, I'll get that done. All the fasteners are sitting here by the radio. So I'll put that back on. There's still one bolt for the transmission yet. All the other ones are torqued. I might actually uh, tackle that from up top. And for doing that, I might actually let the car down so it's not so high. This project is finally complete. I'll just replenish the transmission with some uh, fresh fluid to compensate for what I've lost. Um, yeah, because I mean, it probably lost about a pint. So I'll add some to it. And then this thing is all golden to go again. It sucks now, you know that? Because I mean, this flywheel might have had a chance. I don't know. I still think even in the slightest that this flywheel might not be the proper one. So anyway, I don't know what to do with it. I'll probably end up just pitching that, throwing it in the scrap pile. Hopefully I'll never have to deal with this again. <laughs>